Well, 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 look what we have here, guys. An article from Harvard's Public School of Health claiming that the carnivore diet is, quote, a terrible idea. But hey, if it's healed you, should you be concerned? Hi, I'm Dr. Hampton with more than 29 years of clinical experience and with a master's in nutrition and functional medicine. My hope really is to provide clarity in a world that lacks it at times. Now, the article says that social media influencers like myself are singing the praises of carnivore and its benefits, making claims that the diet can clear your skin, help you lose weight, and, in, and, and really uh, heal your gut. In addition to many other benefits by simply eating an animal-based diet. But Harvard's not impressed and believes that skipping fruit and vegetables might mess up your gut instead. Now, you know, this dietary pattern, they think, has long-term health consequences as stated by Harvard researcher Walter Willett in a March 30 CNBC article. And let me tell you what he said. Quote, by skipping fruit and vegetables, people likely won't get enough fiber in their diets, which can affect their gut health. They also will miss out on carotenoids and polyphenols, both of which are substances with antioxidant properties that have been linked to a lower risk of chronic diseases, such as things like uh, diabetes and, and some types of cancers. They stated that animal products also contain high amounts of saturated fat and cholesterol. In addition to the potentially adverse health effects of the diet, will it who, by the way, is a professor of epidemiology and nutrition, noted that industrial production of animal-based foods is harmful to the planet. And for all these reasons, he said, the carnivore diet sounds like basically a terrible idea. Now, part of me wants to believe that the professor has good intentions, but full disclosure, a lot of the funding for his research is funded by the plant industry. So, you know, but besides this obvious bias, here is what the metabolic health docs want you to think about when you consider this question around carnivore. Issue number one, carnivore has negative gut health issues is what they stated. Well, interesting enough, during my years being vegetarian, for about eight years, which ended 11 years ago, my gut was not very happy. On a plant-based diet, I felt gassy. I spent a lot of time in the bathroom and I suffered from irritable bowel with episodes of recurring abdominal pain and crapping. It was horrible. My problem was not solved until I started to eat an animal-based diet where I initially was low carb, but now I've transitioned to carnivore, which is so much better. The same fruits and vegetables that Harvard professor Willett would encourage me to eat, but all of that fiber seemed to be exactly what was causing me harm. So I just, I'm not with that, and I just don't believe that that's a good idea for me. Ironically, it was at Harvard that they did the largest carnivore study, where 97% of the study participants actually said they had improvements in their GI symptoms. And, and if that's not enough, maybe my fellow carnivores can share their experiences in the video comments. I'll also share a link to a video I did where I talked about why fiber is not necessary to provide some additional context. Issue number two, the carnivore diet lacks antioxidants. Now, antioxidants are essential for all living things, but are naturally produced by our bodies to help fight off those harmful free radicals. Now, free radicals are unstable reactive compounds that can damage cells by changing their DNA or membranes. Thankfully, a low inflammatory diet like carnivore reduces the need for antioxidants coming from our diet. So if you are not consuming things that increase the need for antioxidants like sugar, seed oils, and processed foods, your body will have enough troops to fight the war against free radicals. Those troops include natural antioxidants like lipoic acid, glutathione, coenzyme Q10, melatonin, uric acid, and things like bilirubin. Issue number three, the carnivore diet increases your risk for diabetes. Now, this is kind of laughable. Really, really, professor, 
you believe that removing the one macronutrient, which are the carbohydrates, which when consumed in excess actually is a primary cause of diabetes, will actually cause you to have diabetes. Face emoji. <laughs> I don't need to have a master's in nutrition to know that argument kind of falls on its face. You know, a carnivore diet is a diet where you eat the two macronutrients that don't cause glucose spikes, that don't cause insulin spikes, and therefore is less likely to increase the risk for you getting diabetes. But instead of just trusting the metabolic health doc, you know, I would say see what happens when your continuous glucose monitor, your glucose meter, measures your blood sugar after eating fruit or some ground beef. One thing I can promise you every single time, if you do this experiment, you'll find that the ground beef won't spike your blood glucose, but the fruit will. Issue number four, animal products are high in saturated fat. Whew, this is one that's getting on my nerves, guys. This has been debunked already, and even the Journal of the uh, American College of Cardiology has found that when they did their research, saturated fat is not associated with cardiovascular disease, and, 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 and you can't believe it, but it's actually protective against stroke. Saturated fat is protective against stroke. The myth that saturated fat is harmful continues to uh, be shared throughout, but it's just not a real thing, right? So I'll share a link to that position statement from the College of Cardiology. Issue number five, industrial production of animal-based foods will harm the planet. Now, actually, I kind of agree with this one, but here's the key. Industrial production of nearly anything is harmful to the planet, including industrial, industrial production of plant-based foods. So my solution Let's work together towards a model where regenerative farming becomes our true north and the primary way for us to produce food. This way, animals are raised more ethically and the process of producing crops don't lead to erosion of land and the destruction of the land that many animals depend on for their survival. I suggest checking out Diana Rogers' documentary, Sacred Cow, for more on this topic. My final thought is that the carnivore diet has served you and it has served me. So if that's true, I would not go back to a dietary pattern that made us sick in the first place. So instead, I would check labs periodically, blood pressures, blood sugars, make sure your belly is not getting too big. And if you continue to improve in these areas, you are heading in the right direction. And since I you know, may not have convinced everybody in this video, as I mentioned before, there are many carnivores who are checking out this video. And my favor and my request is that you should, you should share your success stories in the video comments. That way, you'll give others a little inspiration and most importantly, the confidence to give carnivore a try. Don't let those fancy Harvard articles and professors rain on your meaty parade. I really appreciate you guys coming to this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And until the next video from the Metabolic Health Doc, continue to be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.